down on the river banks, right next to plant form, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But before I get onto that particular part of this YouTube, I wanted you to hear the thoughts of Barley Oaks, who was the sculptor of gestation, which was relocated into the top end of the Queen Street Mall for the 25th anniversary of Expo 88. And I think he has particular good thoughts and feelings about the landscaping of Expo 88. Here's Bali. Is that I was absolutely incredibly impressed by John Truscott's vision of not only the natural world and what they, he brought in with the robiliads and all the incredible floral things that were going on in the trees and the, just bringing the, the great outback and jungle of, the, of Australia into that little space in Brisbane, but the incredible sculpture exhibit that he put together. I don't think there's ever been an expo before or since that highlighted all the arts to the extent of the vision of what would happen at the expo in Brisbane. And I commend the city, I commend the people that organized uh, the expo. And, and so you've now heard Barley Oaks and his thoughts about the Expo 88 site. And at the end of Expo 88, Sally Ann Atkinson commissioned Philip Bacon to put together a collection of sculptures which then Sally Ann Atkinson used in part and there are only some of them by the time that she left office had been used but the ones that she put up on the show the ones that we won't be seeing this morning are Showdown at Boondle and also the Skaters at the Sleeman Centre but you'll get a good feel of the way Sally Ann Atkinson put together all these wonderful sculptures to try and leverage up the international status of Brisbane. So I'm hoping that you find this YouTube of interest and informative because I think it's important to understand the purpose of a lot of this sculptures, why they were placed where they were, as we set about reconfiguring and rebirthing the Expo 88 art trail to be a more significant tourist asset for Brisbane in the years from 2018 on. Thank you. The river and the placement of these Expo 88 art sculptures was for a definite purpose and this particular sculpture called Plant Form by Robert Jupiter was placed down on the river as a welcome statement to the boats that moor here and these boats that moor here are international boats. These are boats that have come in from California, from Hawaii, from Japan and they've come into Brisbane and they moor here and then they go on to the next part of the trip. So that this was part of the statement and the logic by Sally Ann Atkinson to be a welcoming um, statement to Brisbane but also... So behind us are the Pomodoros and you're going to hear Sally Ann Atkinson talk about those beautiful sculptures in a second. And they were originally placed in King George Square and they were a backdrop out of her office for the people who visited her. His style was the way he, he did things and um, I, I just feel so thrilled that we had the, we have, we have um, those pieces that a lot of people of course don't know what they are and that doesn't matter either um, but the you know the Greek myths that they are um, but I just think where they are now is wonderful. And you've managed to save them twice in effect haven't you? <laughs> oh, yes. You saved them from Expo and then um, you saved them, <laughs> dare I say, saved them from Campbell. Well, I don't know that I saved them from Campbell, but I certainly alerted Campbell when the square was, King George Square was being done up, in a manner of speaking, um, that I went into and said, Campbell, just be careful of those beautiful sculptures over there, because um, apart from being beautiful, um, they're very valuable. In fact, when we paid 1 million, 1.1 million for them um, after Expo, um, because of not just for their intrinsic beauty, but because they were by Mr. Pomodoro, um, who was on display in all the great cities of the world. And he was one of the, the rare sculptors at Expo, actually, that arrived at Expo, who was a living legend, and was a living yes, legend yes. at the time, because you know, John Truscott had managed to put together a significant collection, some of which was legendary because they had passed on, others which were legendary and they were still alive and as it happens some that are legendary 
25 years after yeah. the event because yeah. their career has gone from that little push expo gave them to being legendary. Well, he was a legend, of course, at, at that stage. And I have a, a book that he gave me as well with all his work in it, which I've lent to somebody and I haven't got back. So if anybody out there has it, could you please send it back because it has to. So you've now heard Sally Ann talk about the Pomodoros that you saw down the bottom of the hill. And the other um, part of the narrative that Sally Ann was putting together was the establishment of a sculpture park in King Edward Park here. And this piece here, Memories of Wind, was the first uh, injection into the sculpture park. And as my son Nathan panned around, you would have seen in the background other sculptures in this park. So here we are. Right behind me here was where Continuous Division used to be. And it was placed up here so that Sally Ann, when she took the visitors through the city, past the old windmill, one of Brisbane's most historic buildings, could then counterbalance that historic structure in Brisbane with this modern artistic statement that you'll hear John Greger talk about in a minute. Thank you. And it talks about Greg John's work in, in general and how he uses space and time. So here again, this statement, which is called Essay, by Heather, Heather Elliard. Sculpture occupies, occupies space. It is three-dimensional. Therefore, it exists in time. Space and time, a continuum. Anything which requires space and And it is an time. absolutely beautiful winter's day in Queensland. So here we are in the second part of the series and this is Morningstar which was a, a centrepiece of Expo 88 uh, at Times Square uh, and Sally Ann Atkinson placed this just in front of the Queensland Parliament House and in 1984 or 85 they had finished the final part of the Queensland Parliament House which was a port chair and now um, the view from the Port Cachere where the parliamentarians used to walk out and then show the landscape of Brisbane has been completely and utterly um, crowded out with the beautiful trees that have grown uh, at this end of the Queensland Botanical Gardens. So Sally Ann's idea was that this wonderful modernistic piece was there for the parliamentarians to show off Queensland and show off how up to date and modern we were. Brisbane or Knoxville that probably isn't, you know, hasn't been a world city. It's not a mecca for international tourism. New Yorkers um, have got so many great icons. You know, they can afford to let some of these places go. But for Brisbane, that was one of our seminal moments. That was a, a, a part of our maturity. It's a bit like the Commonwealth Games was a coming of age. Expo was a coming of age. We're always at that point of coming of age. Uh, and so we should have a lot of those sorts of places. Yeah.